Okay, so this is a uh, quick screencast on the basic rules of slalom racing in USSA. I'd start by watching a little bit of Michaela Schifrin's recent World Cup win in slalom. Twice she has been on the podium and in slalom. I'm talking to her coaches and, and we see it. The word. As you watch it, it's a series of uh, single poles as opposed to GS, which has two poles in a panel. And you can see that the skier wears all sorts of armor, allow them to run the gates over. It makes it very difficult to tell whether they've actually gone around the gates. If you're ever charged with being gatekeeper, slalom is one of the more difficult uh, events to judge. Eventually, we're going to see a, a, a series of very short turns are going to happen. One, two, right there. And then I want you to look right here is another one right there, double gates, that's a, called a flush. Every time you see a red and a blue gate right next to each other, that's what are called vertical combinations. And then we'll show here, here's one right here, that's called a hairpin. And there's a flush to finish. And there's the game. There's the race is over now. So that is the full race. Um, now let's go back to what, look at some of the rules of correct passage for slalom. Okay, the race starts out pretty much the same as the GS. I start out in the start gate, which is uh, two gates here, a red, a, two reds perhaps, could be two blues, depends on the way they start the uh, course. There's um, a wand again, right there, a little plastic piece which you have to push aside, break through to start the race. Uh, the commands for starting in slalom are slightly different than in giant slalom. In giant slalom, you're given a countdown, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In slalom, you're only given two commands, ready and go. After the starter says go, you have 10 seconds to enter the course and begin the race. The time begins as soon as this wand, this little plastic stick, is pushed aside. Once it's moved around 5 or 10 degrees, uh, the race begins for you. The clock is started. The passage is similar to in GS. The gate line is the same. Right? This is a series of open gates. Uh, and in this case, the proper gate line to cross is that line drawn between each of the turning poles. And you can see that in each case, the skier with the green line crosses the red right here, he then crosses again here, he crosses this right here, so he's correctly crossing each of these we call gate lines. So in slalom, you go around the gates just like you do in general Stein slalom, the only difference is whereas uh, a giant slalom gate consists of two sticks with a cloth panel between them, uh, this is GS, in slalom you just have a single pole Right, so you would go around that pole like that, but in slalom you just have to go around that single pole, and that's the difference. And so you have a colorful panel here in giant slalom and no panels in slalom. This really is what gives the skiers the opportunity to kind of run down the gates. Okay, so let's go to the next frame. So these are called vertical combinations. The first one, the more common one, is called the hairpin. Let me show you what the correct passage looks like for a hairpin. You're going to go right and left. Now here you're going to go over the top and then you have this quick combination. It's called a hairpin. This set of red and blue gates that are right next to each other. When you see two of them right alongside each other like this, uh, that is what uh, usually gives away the hairpin and again this is the gate line between here and here you have to cross those two lines so if you're racing you are going to go around the same ones as always here and you can see now I'm going to cross the blue dotted line here and then I'm going to cross that blue dotted line there again and then I have to go around those gates so these are basically two what we call vertical gates in a row. Uh, they will always put both the reds and both the blues in here because 
um, we have what are called open gates up here. In open gates, it's obvious that you're going around the outsides of them. There's really only one way to do it fairly. You could, if you wanted to, just go straight down the center, and uh, that wouldn't be very fair, right? You could just go right down the middle here and not go around the gates. That would clearly be the, the way that we'd be cheating, I guess, right? So if you're going correctly, you're going to pass around the outsides of the blue and the red. And just like you were going to go around the outside of this red, but now you have to cross that line there and that line there for the blue. So you're going to cross here, and it's a quick one, two. Basically, it's a, it's a fast one turn. It tends to take you out in this direction. Right? It sends you off to the side. And so basically, its purpose in its course setting is to take a course which is going in this direction, generally, and then move it over to here. Basically, just like change lanes almost. All right, so that's the hairpin. Now, here's some things that can go wrong. Uh, let's say that you're coming in, and then you decide to go underneath this instead of over it. And then you end up over here, and then you're looking, right, oh my, you know, where is the rest of the course? And what happens is when, when people do this, they don't even realize they've done it sometimes. And, and they get back in the course here, and um, it's as if they never realized they made a mistake. Let me show you why. Here's the correct passage. So they will eventually join up into the same direction here. So you would miss this gate entirely, and, and you wouldn't even know it. Uh, you would, in fact, have correctly crossed this gate line and this gate line, since it's okay to go either direction. Both the green direction and the blue direction are okay in slalom. But the problem with the, the green direction is it's, it's sending you out here where there's no course. right? So you would then have to turn back and you would join up with the with the normal path which is this blue one but you would have missed this gate so you would have been disqualified for missing this particular gate right here and uh, at the end of the race you'd find out well I thought I did fine I didn't fall or anything but you'd find out that you were in fact disqualified so again the proper way through the gates over the top of the red and then through quickly and then back and forth again and it's called a hairpin. All right. The next type of vertical combination is the flush. Now this is uh, a little bit quicker and, and a little more straight line. The flush, are, they're called a vertical combination, by the way, because all the gates are lined up in a straight line. So you'll have these gates straight down the fall line usually, um, and that's what makes them a vertical combination. Whereas these gates, you can see, are not lined up Right, you have a series of gates. They're not in the same line. So these are not vertical gates. They're called open gates. So again, these two gates are called open gates. And then these two here are closed or vertical gates. And then we go back into open gates again down here. So these are open. These are the closed gates, and these are your open gates. And again, uh, they're closed, I guess, because they're like a door. Right? These doors are open. You can pass straight down through them. But when they're like this, you have to go across them, I guess. That makes them closed. And lots of ways to look at it. So here again, here's the, the correct passage. Uh, you would be going around and around, and then you got to cross this gate line. And then you're going to have to cross this gate line, and then you're going to have to cross this gate line again in order to correctly cross through this combination. So here I've crossed the blue now, here I've crossed across that blue, I've got to cross across that red and then through that blue. And so now I've done it. You don't go in between here. This is a, sort of a no man's land, really. Uh, remember, you have to cross the line that connects the two blues, cross the line that connects the two reds, and cross the line that connects the two blues. And then we go out into our normal back and forth. So this is the correct passage for slalom in the uh, here, uh, sorry, the, the flush. Now what can go wrong? All right, well let's say that you're skiing through here and you accidentally go past that. 
So now you decide, oh, I'm going to have to hike back up, I'm walking back up. So where do you go? Well, you've crossed this line already. What you haven't crossed yet correctly is this line. So once you've walked up here, you can just ski across that line and then back down through and then out because you will then have crossed the last gate line and you will done it. So you, you've kind of taken the long way, right? You've gone down here and then you've kind of walked back up, gone through and then around again, right? This would be okay to do. Here's another possible one you could do wrong. Uh, let's see, you could go underneath this like that. Uh, this would be legal, all right? Because you would have crossed both this gate line and this gate line here and this gate line here. And again, it doesn't matter which direction you cross these lines in, in slalom. But unfortunately, because now you're headed out in this direction where there's no course, you're going to have a hard time finding where to go next. And you probably are just going to go down here and then think that you've done it right and uh, not even realize that you've missed this gate right here. This is called entering the flush the wrong way or doing the flush backwards. If you were a gatekeeper, you would say they missed this gate right here because the correct way to pass would look like this. Right, so there they've gone around that gate, but you can see that the blue and the green paths are going to meet up right there, and, and from that point on, it will look correct. It's very difficult sometimes to even tell that some person has gone around this backwards, and it's likely that the athlete won't even realize they've missed this gate. This is very typical uh, of, of young racers that wouldn't even notice they've missed that gate. Okay, so these are the uh, hairpins and flushes. Now, uh, one of the other problems is uh, also how to hike in slalom. So let's just look at another example of hiking. So here's our, our gate, the proper passage. So these are open gates now. How do I hike in open gates? So let's say I, I, I incorrectly ski below this gate. Now the rule is I should cross that gate line, cross that gate line, cross that gate line, and so on as I ski through the course. I've missed this one right here. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to hike back up. And I don't have to go all the way above the red. I just have to cross this line so I can ski around this and then continue skiing through the course. I've crossed that line now. I've crossed that line. I've crossed all the lines. And so now it's legal. Uh, another way to do it would be this. I could ski down here and then loop around there and then ski around and go through again. Because in both cases, I would have crossed both that line and that line and that line and that line. So you can see I've crossed it here, I've crossed it here, I've crossed all the gate lines in the proper way. So, but basically when you're having, if you have to hike in, in, uh, in slalom, you have to circle the gate you've missed. So you've, you've made this gate, but you've missed this one, so you have to circle around it. So that's pretty much um, the information we have for slalom. Um, and hoping you good luck this year, and hope this helped.